And what if I told you something like this was holding up your house? Dude, look, is that what I think it is? No way. That's a skull, that's an eye socket. Where's the rest of it? Or what ate it? <laughs> hey gang, I'm Paul with Stutback. Welcome back to our channel. A few months ago, I got a call from some good friends of mine that live at this house. They said, hey man, can you come check this out? We have a couple of loose floorboards. So I said, sure, I'll be there after work. I came by, not only did I find loose floorboards, I was about to fall through the floorboards. This house was caving in on itself. Let me walk you through why. So this house was built post-World War II. You come over here, you see the old shiplap tongue and groove, the old plaster screed. That's how they used to do walls before they had drywall. And obviously, we're built up on piers right here. And there is only about a foot of clearance between the dirt and the bottom of the joist. So at some point, at many points on this house, this house has been added onto and it's been renovated. If you look over here, we just have shiplap subfloor in great shape. But if you come over here, we've got two layers of three quarter inch plywood over here. And then behind me right here, we have the shiplap, which is rotten, and the plywood on top. Now, if you'll notice, the plywood on top right here is in great shape. And this stuff is just gone. Why is that? Look at this. There's two layers of plastic between the original subfloor and this new subfloor. So that trapped all the moisture under the house. It couldn't dry out and it's all destroyed now. I mean, this thing's about to fail right here. Look at that. So right after that, about five months ago, Jordan and I came in here and demoed this closet. The reason we had to do that, again, this is a wood frame house with a brick veneer that goes all the way down to the ground with hardly any access or ventilation under the house. So no ventilation under the house. Another reason why all this is failing. So once we had this open, we called in a structural engineer. He crawled under here, did his assessment. We called in our plumbers. There are four major plumbing leaks under the house that have to be fixed. We think that's another source of all the water and moisture under the house. We've had mechanical engineers, mechanical contractors. We've had a blower door test done, mold remediation companies here, insurance adjusters here. Everybody's been here. We've got a game plan and we're gonna save this house. So let's hop on out of this hole, head on into that other room and show you today's project. Alrighty guys, this is the room where we need to demo this floor. Now this house is owned by an order of religious brothers and this is the room they use as their chapel. They call it the chapel room, but I think I'm gonna call it the trampoline room because this thing is bouncing. Now let me walk you through it real quick. It's 12 feet here, 14 feet here. Exterior wall, original exterior wall, but since then two bedrooms have been added in the front. Bathroom right there, bedroom right there. Now I've set up my cross line laser in the doorway right here and you can see that it's just hitting the intersection between the floor and the casing and the floor and the shoe right here and all along that exterior wall and I can actually see those from the master closet we demoed as I look under the house and the wood here looks good. So we're hoping that it's just this subfloor and the associated joist and we can fix it. But if I hold my tape measure right there I'm at four and a quarter. So there's a four and a quarter inch dip. Just over what, eight feet? No, seven feet. And to show you how extreme that is, we brought the water hose in here. We cut a hole in the floor. This is like a big barrier-free shower, isn't it? So that's gonna be our drain. And check this out. It's just going immediately to that hole we drilled. So in that nuts, maybe some of you live in a house and that's normal, but where we are, that's not normal. So we're gonna fix all that. So it's 100 degrees here in the sunny south today, but we're gonna get in here, remove this quarter round, get our circular saw in here, get this subfloor in the dumpster, and see what we find underneath.
All right, dude. I'm, that's that's the line of doom. Yep. Way too many nails in there. I was destroying way too many circular saw blades. So we switched to the resip. A little slower, but one blade cut right through all that. All right, got a pretty good gap here, dude. Heads or tails on who uh, jumps in the middle? I don't want to go too crazy in case there's any wires under there. I know there's no pipes, but I'm not sure if there's any wires. So I'm going to make a cut across here and start getting out of here. All right, guys, here's the game plan. I'm going to park myself right here with the reciprocating saw, just like I finished this cut. I'm going to cut open a hole so I can get in there and just start chipping away at the whole thing. Don't know any other way to do it. Sometimes with this work, you just got to start somewhere, right? So we're going to start right here. Let's do it. See those old cut nails? That's what was used to fasten the strip flooring to the subfloor. That's why I was tearing up my circular saw blades. And now we just broke our first reset blade. Let's reload. Alrighty guys, this is what we got done this afternoon. It's 100 degrees out here, even inside, and uh, hard to breathe through those masks. But the real problem, gang, is these old cut nails. Look at that. They are tearing up my blades. So I think I'll go get a 12-pack of blades, not what you're thinking of, and we'll finish this for tomorrow. So I'm ready to get out of here, go get cleaned up, we'll get some blades, hit this thing tomorrow, and finish the demo. Let's do it. All right. Hey guys, just the next day we got some more blades for our circular saw. Picked up a four pack of Avanti Pro. It's really all the home center had. Everything else was gone. So hopefully these work good. I'll take you over here and show you what we found on this nailing pattern for this old hardwood floor. So all the nails go this way. You can see this one right here. So we figured if we make a cut just on this side of the tongue, we'll hit the minimum number of nails. And if we do hit a nail, there's less cross section here than at the top. So we're just gonna try it. Let's get suited up in our dust mask, hearing protection, start cutting some wood. Tropical storm coming in. Yeah, a little pre-hurricane demolition, huh? Yep. Alrighty gang, we're gonna take a little break and catch you up on what we've done. So this room is completely demoed. You saw how easily it came apart. The framing was just gone. It was rotten. It was shot. Now just to give you some bearings, when I started the video, I was on the other side of this wall, facing that way. Now you can actually see through there right here. Now I wasn't sure if these guys right here, the main support for the framing, uh, were beams or dimensional lumber. 
I'm glad to see they're dimensional lumber. They're just two by 10, so that'll be super easy for us to replace them and to get material. So two by 10, doubled up. I guess that's what they figured was strong enough. There's one here under this wall, one here under this wall. The rot was confined to this area, but it does go down the hallway. So that's our next step, is to demo the floor in the hallway. Speaking of confined areas, you know what I'm noticing over here, Dad, is look on the, on the very end of this beam. You can see that it's perfectly good. It is. And it looks like one of the floor joists that were um, running this way completely prevented that section from getting rotten. Yeah, let me get a hammer. Yeah, look at that. Yeah. Solid as a rock. What does the, the mold sound like? Oh. <laughs> but you're right, that board did stop it. Yeah. And you know, that board was sitting right here, so maybe this flashing and everything else prevented everything from going up there, who knows? Right, and uh, this is an exterior wall, so that's, that would be a whole different ball game if we had to replace that. That's right, we have an addition right here, but this is the original rim joist from the side of the house. And of course right here, we're still at the exterior. What grosses you out more, the mold or the skulls? When I see a skull, what I think about is what ate it, what, what killed it, so. I don't know. So you don't know what's crawling around down here? Right. Hopefully it's a snake. No. <laughs> so the hallway's the same process. Let's cut it and demo it. Alrighty guys, we got this whole hallway demoed as far as taking out the oak strip flooring and the subfloor. When I took out this spot where I'm standing, I was pretty encouraged because I saw this double two by 10 and it actually ends right here, which would make replacing that a pretty simple process. It ends at this double two by 10, which clear spans from this wall on this pier to the other side of that chapel. And it's supporting a bathroom right here. So as we worked our way east, that one's good. We thought we were in good shape, easy. We'll just fix the floor, no problem. But the farther we went east, the worse it got. Let me show you. There's a doubled one here. I'm, I'm not sure why this one is doubled. Maybe this is the beginning of some of the repairs that you're about to see. This one's not bad, but as you can see, this one's catastrophically failed. There's white mold all over the next three. And then actually uh, a friend of mine repaired this many years ago. He sistered these on, try to get a few more years out of the building, but this is all rotten. And actually the joist that Jordan is standing over, it's almost half gone, I can see it from here. So we have a big problem here. Changing these that go under that bathroom is gonna be a big job. Now we're into that bathroom. Now we have to demo that bathroom. And since I mentioned the bathroom, let's walk back there and let me show you something under the house. All right, a little earlier, I said this guy clear spanned all the way to the other side of the chapel. What it done, it's sitting on this pier right here. That's not what I wanted to show you. Take a look under here. Not this one, but the next one. That joist has failed. Can you see that? And there's that pit I was telling you about. Alrighty gang, we're back here on solid ground. We wanted to show you that bathroom because it is not in the budget and it is not in the timeline for this project. We were hoping just to do the closet, that chapel, and this hallway. You always run into unexpected things on a project. We really didn't want to get into that bathroom because bathrooms are expensive and we have to take all the tile out, all the fixtures, and redo that whole bathroom after we reframe the floor. So I'll have to talk to the owners about that, see what they want to do, let us know what you would do. I mean, this is a super desirable neighborhood, probably one of the most desirable neighborhoods in our city. In fact, they're building a huge house, brand new, out of the ground, right across the street. So we want to save this property, but I'm going to come back here tomorrow morning I'm gonna get under here, really see what the scope of this thing is and probably have another meeting with the owners. And also gang, we are really hoping to show you the design our engineer came up with to jack this house up off the piers just enough for us to fix all the framing and put her back down on the solid foundation. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna be really cool. Yeah, I've never seen anything like it. Of all the whole project, I'm excited about doing that the I, most. I am. That is gonna yeah. be so cool. It's gonna be great. But just like these Raptors, Jordan, I think your like button has catastrophically failed, gang. You need to get in there, repair it, smash it. Get down below in the comments. Let us know what you think of this crazy project. Ask us a question, and please subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you on the next one.